Hi guys! So glad to see you. Be even better when we can do it in person, but we'll have a lot of fun today. We have a new verse to start out with today, and um, because Jesus died for our sins, like we've talked about the last few weeks, 1 John 1, 9 says, go ahead and say it with me, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. 1 John 1, 9. Okay, so let's talk about it a little bit, and then I'm going to have you do something, and we'll play a game with it next week, okay? But notice that first word there, confess. That means to tell God about it, okay? So we have to tell him about our sins. Well, doesn't he already know? Well, yes, he does already know. Um, but he wants to hear it. It's sort of like when you say you're sorry to someone, and you need to let them know what you're sorry for. Um, so it says he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins <clears throat> and to cleanse us. What does cleanse mean? Well, if you take this paper and we put our fingers in front of the S and the E, what word do we have? That's clean, right? Yeah. So that's the same thing. It's like cleaning us. Um, it's taking care of, getting rid of all those sins. The Bible says he takes them and throws them as far as the east is from the west. We'll have to think about that a minute, okay? But it also says he'll remember them no more, which is awesome, isn't it? Okay, and then from all unrighteousness. Well, what does that mean? Well, we'll get rid of the UN, and that just leaves us with... Righteousness, right? Hmm, what does righteousness mean? Um, well, it means to do right by all the people in your life, okay? So like friends and family and people like that, to do right by them. In other words, to be honest with them, um, to share with them, to love them in the best way possible. Okay, it has... See, you even got the word right in there. If you look between my fingers there, there's the word right. It means to do right by them. So unrighteous means, unrighteousness means to not do right, okay, by them or by God. It's both, okay? So from it's going to cleanse us from our sins, from all unrighteousness, anything we would do wrong, okay? All right, so... This week, what I want you to do is take some cards, sort of like we've done before. You can either just take some paper or an index card or maybe even some colorful cards and you can decorate them if you want, okay? And write down one word on each card of a verse and then take the where it's found at and put that on one as well. And next week, we're going to play a game with it. But you can decorate them if you want. You can do whatever you want, but that's for the verse for this week. Okay, and then also we're going to talk about um, a story that when Jesus was on the earth again, today it's in Mark, uh, Mark 2, 1 to 12. So um, let's go over that again. This, uh, Mark is in which testament? Old or new? New, right? And it's Matthew, Mark. Okay, so it's the second book in the New Testament, and it's one of those books where it talks about the things Jesus did when he was on the earth. So that's a, this is a story about Jesus this morning. So what I want you to do is beside this video somewhere, I'm not sure where exactly they put it, but there should be a link to this page, and you can go ahead and print it off um, and color it while we're doing the story this morning. Okay, because this is the story we're going to do this morning. If you can't find the link or you can't print it off, um, Mrs. Fox at the church office will be glad to get you one. So go ahead and stop by there. But um, Or you could draw your own picture. That would be awesome too. You could um, draw one very similar, okay? So you can go ahead and start doing that with your markers or crayons or whatever you have. And what are... Um, what Jesus is doing today in this story is there were some guys 
um, who had a problem. Um, maybe you can figure out what they should do. Let's go ahead and read part of it. Well, maybe we'll wait just a second. The book of Mark tells about four men who had a good friend and their good friend couldn't walk. Um, it was it's called being paralyzed, okay? And all he could do was lie on his mat all day. They didn't have things like we do now where, you know, maybe a scooter or a, or a wheelchair um, or any of those things like we do now. He was pretty much dependent upon people to take him around wherever he went. They didn't have crutches or anything. So he was dependent on those. And, and all he had to do was lie on his mat all day. He couldn't work. And that was a really bad thing then. One day, the friends heard that Jesus had come to their town, and they knew that he had done miracles. He had healed people before and made them walk. So they were excited for their friends. They wanted to take their friend to go see Jesus to see if he could walk again. So they decided to take him to Jesus. So let's brainstorm, how would you do that? Think about, go ahead and talk about it a little amongst yourselves and then come back to me and talk about a little bit how you could get him from where they're at over here to where Jesus is, okay? Go ahead and do that. Okay, now, what they did was they carried the paralyzed man to the house where Jesus was at. So... And it was four guys, so I don't know if he was big or small, but it's it's an awkward thing to carry somebody, okay? So I and we don't know. Maybe they had a mat with a like a pole through pole on each side, and they took him like that, or we don't know how exactly they did it, but they took him. They carried him there. Um, but the, even once they got there, though, there was another problem. The house was way too crowded, okay? So. It's like they said that even people were outside, like there was a big crowd of people outside. So the inside was elbow to elbow. And then even outside, there were people all crowded in there and they couldn't get in. Okay. So let's brainstorm some ideas about how they would get him inside. And then we'll tell you. Okay. Go ahead and talk about it for a few minutes and then come back. Okay, well, let's see what happened. We'll go ahead and read it, all right? Since they could not get him to Jesus because of the crowd, they made an opening in the roof. Now, I don't know about you, but I can't make an opening in my roof. Not very easily, anyway. But back then, they had things like overlapping leaves and hay and straw and stuff like that that they piled on top of each other, and it was in different sections, so they probably could just take that off the roof um, and make a hole in it. Um, it says they did it by digging through it and then lowered the mat that the man was lying on. So he must have had a mat, his mat with him. And when Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralyzed man, what do you think they said? Hmm. He said, son, your sins are forgiven. Oh, wow. Was that what you expected? Maybe you expected him just to say, be healed, because a lot of times he did that, didn't he? But he didn't this time. He said, your son, your sins are forgiven. What do you think is the harder problem, the, wor the problem that is the worst? His being paralyzed or the sin in his heart? Really, it's the sin in his heart, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Okay, and that's what God looks at. So anyway, so that's what Jesus said. Now, um, back then, one thing that, that also is important to know about back then is that back then they kind of equated, huh, that's a big word for you, isn't it? Um, they kind of thought like people who were sick, that they were sick because of sin in their life, Okay. So this was something that Jesus was kind of trying to do with the people that were to, to uh, talk to the people who were around them too. It wasn't just about 
this man and his friends. It was about the people who were watching and listening. And so when he said to them, your sins are forgiven, they're like, huh? Because who is the only one that can forgive sins? God is, right? Yeah, and they knew that. So by saying that his sins were forgiven and claiming he could forgive sins, he was saying he was God. And they didn't believe he was God. We do, don't we? Yeah. That's why we know Jesus can forgive sin because Jesus is God. Okay? So, so he was trying to show them something. All right? We know Jesus can forgive our sins. We're lost in our sins without his forgiveness, right? But let's see what else Jesus did then. So then, <clears throat> but I want you to know that the Son of Man, which is Jesus, has authority on earth to forgive sins. So he said to the man, I tell you, get up, take your mat, and go home. And he got up, took his mat, and walked out in full view of them all. This amazed everyone, and they praised God, saying, We've never seen anything like this. So he showed them by what he did, that he not only had could forgive sins, but that he was God, which is awesome. Um, so we know that he can forgive sins. The next thing we're going to do, are you... Getting done with your coloring page a little bit? You'll have to save them and show them to me. Bring them the first time we're back in Sunday school so I can see some of the stuff that you've done. So anyway, well, today we also need your Play-Doh again. Again, if you this is your first time doing Sunday school with us, um, there's Play-Doh at the church that you can pick up if you don't have any um, at home. You, there's some there that you can go and pick up, um, but we'll need that for today. Um, so Jesus' forgiveness gets rid of all the sins, right? So let me show you what I mean, okay? Take your Play-Doh and form it into something that reminds you of a sin. For instance, it could be like lips. If like maybe you have a hard time not lying or... If, um, or if you're thinking of the sin of, uh, like saying bad words, swearing, um, or maybe talking back to your mom and dad or yelling, that type of thing. Okay. Um, other sins might be like sealing. So maybe if you take a hand, make a hand. All right. That's something that our hands would do. It would be to take something. Um, you could just anything that represents a sin. Okay. All right, and then come back and we'll we'll talk about that. Okay, well, after a minute, after he had told them that he would forgive, he said, my child, your sins are forgiven. So I want you to squash your Play-Doh flat, like you're flattening that sin, all right? That's what Jesus does, like I said. He says in the Bible, he's going to take our sins and get rid of it as far as the east is from the west. Well, if you think about the east and the west, the east goes one way and the west comes another way and they kind of overlap and they never have an ending. They really don't. So when he says as far as the east is from the west, you know, it's forever. They're gone forever. He says, I will remember your sins no more. So squash it. So you can do that a couple more times if you want, if you want to think of some more sins and then squash them. Because that's what Jesus does with our sins, isn't it? He forgives them completely. He gets rid of them if we ask him to, just like our verse said today. Okay, and then one more thing that you can do either today or sometime this week if you would like. It's a game that we can play. Um, sins are the wrong things we do, right? We talked about that a little bit. So without God's forgiveness... Those sins stick to us forever, don't they? Okay? Um, and that's not good to hang on to those things. I don't know about you, but it really hurts us. And it hurts our relationship with God. Those things come in between us and our relationship with God. So what I want you to do is take some tape. 
A masking tape would probably work the best if you've got some. Um, and take out 10 pieces for each person that's going to play. Okay? And make little pieces like this. Okay? And then I want you to put, write a sin with like a marker or a pen on each one of those um, pieces of tape. So you might have one here that's live, one right here that's, um, uh, you know, saying a bad word, you know, so you can put swearing on there. Okay, so then you've got them all here, all right? And, and you'll have 10 of them per person. So then we're going to play tag with those, and you're going to have one person um, that's a sin sticker, okay? And then you're going to have another person who's Jesus, Okay, and then the rest of them can run around. And what you're trying to do is you're trying to put, stick those sins. If you're a sin sticker, you're sticking those sins on the people that are you're running after, that you're going to run after. You're going to run after them and stick a sin on them. And then Jesus is going to be another person running around. And it's sort of like freeze tag. Jesus can unfreeze them by taking their sin off them. Okay. So you're going to stick them, the person who's it is going to stick the stickers on them, stick the sins on the people running around, and then um, Jesus is going to take them off. And you can take turns being it and, um, or, and take turns being Jesus, which would be even a, a, a neater thing to do, wouldn't it be, if you could do that? Anyway, to forgive everyone's sins. So... Uh, the people in today's passage expected Jesus to heal the man, but first, didn't he? He forgave him of his sin, which was the bigger sin, the bigger thing. I guess I shouldn't say the bigger sin, but bigger thing. That was his worst problem was the sin in his heart. The legs were another big problem, but they weren't near as bad, bad as the sin in our hearts. That's the worst thing for all of us, isn't it? And that's why Jesus came. That's what we talked about. When Jesus came and died on the cross, he died, he came to die for our sins. They thought he was coming to um, get them out from under the Romans who were ruling over them at the time, okay? And that was a big problem, wasn't it? But that wasn't the worst problem. The worst problem was our sin, and that's why he came, and that's why he died. And someday he will come back and and take us home to be with him and take us away from um, the bad things that happen here on earth. So anyway, so I hope you have a great week and that you have fun doing everything today and hope to see you soon. Bye-bye.